So welcome to this evening's presentation. Thank you all for being here, those of you in person here at the Catholic Information Center, and those of you joining us by Zoom. My name is Mark Mann. I'm the Director of Program and Institutes here at the Catholic Information Center. We are a ministry of the Paulist Fathers in collaboration with the Catholic Diocese of Grand Rapids. The ministry, the center offers opportunities for people who are already Catholic to have a deeper uh, reflective awareness of the faith, uh, but we also invite those of different faith traditions or no faith tradition at all to dialogue with us about this way of life. I'm very happy to welcome Teresa Bravada, our artist on exhibit here uh, for tonight as the presenter. I would like to remind everyone that the programs here at the Catholic Information Center are free and open to the public. We rely on donations and it would not be possible without your contributions. We appreciate your support. You can also connect with us by signing up for our free newsletter that we send out on Thursdays about upcoming programs, and of course, connect with us on social media, or also uh, check out some of the programs that we have recorded on YouTube, and including tonight's presentation, which will be posted there. And of course, you're welcome to visit us here at the center. I know um, we haven't really negotiated how much longer we have the exhibit up, have we? <laughs> how you we'll figure that out. Right. <laughs> For the time being, you're welcome to come and see Teresa's work on exhibit here at the Catholic Information Center. Let's continue in prayer. Almighty and ever living God, when your love spilled over into creation, that was a work of art. And we are your work of art. We appreciate that like you, we are creative spirits, embodied souls, people made in your image. We ask that this time be a time of grace for us. We ask your blessing on our presenter. We ask all these things in the name of Christ, our Lord. Amen. Artist Teresa Bravada has exhibited at the Forest Hills Fine Arts Center, Holland Area Arts Council, Moynihan Gallery, and now at the Catholic Information Center. Uh, originally from Caledonia, you traveled around a little bit, did some um, teaching, uh, and then came here and is now working in Holland, Michigan at Hope College. Uh, and when she's not doing art or working, she'll find her buried deep in the woods, somewhere taking pointers from nature on pattern, color and flow. Please help me welcome Teresa Bravada. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, I was just sharing with this table over here that I've exhibited at a variety of places. And, you know, often people will say, hey, can we hang your art here? But never has someone said, I specifically want you to hang here because your theme is tying in with what we're doing. And then when I heard the theme was caring for your common home and just reflection upon the earth, I was like, yes, this is my wheelhouse. But to be honest, I didn't even realize how much so until I was preparing for this talk. I mean, yeah, if you look at my artwork, there's a lot of green and there's there are often imaginary landscapes, but I didn't realize how inspired I was. I knew, but not how much deep within my art, going out into the woods, being in nature, reflecting on nature was you know displayed in my art um so i'm going to talk a little bit aimlessly at first but bear with me i'm setting the stage for why i do art the way i do and how i do the art i do so yeah could you click the got it button a second you got it got it all right so first up um i have a friend this is so hard for me not to walk around <laughs> like i am just such a roamer this is like literally how i think so i'm standing still this is very hard for me you're seeing this happen right here right now um i have a friend that one time said to me that every morning they wake up and they imagine themselves going and sitting on God's lap. I'm not just saying this because of the location I'm at right now. Going and sitting on God's lap. And in that moment, they tell that tell, they say everything. This is what's happening in my life. This is what I'm struggling with. These are my joys. And then every morning gets off of God's lap and does the same thing the next day. And I think about that a lot. And I, I think that I do the same thing when I walk into the woods. Um, 
I walk into the woods some days to be like, yes, this is what happened today. And I'm going to share it. And I'm so excited. And I walk into the woods sometimes. There's actually this park by my house where it's like a, a relatively small loop. Some days I just need a loop. Some days I need two, three, four, five. And I'm going through something in my own life. Um, sometimes I'm crying. Sometimes I'm frustrated. Sometimes I'm angry. And if you know me well enough, you know I talk out loud to myself often, Derek. Um, so sometimes in the woods, I'm just so grateful that in my mind, I'm the only one around and uh, I will just talk out loud and have these moments. And like I said, sometimes it's one time, sometimes it's several times, but I leave there feeling better. I leave there feeling like I've released something. I leave there lighter than when I walked in. Yeah, and I used to be like, I don't know why that happens. Trouble. Like, oh, I feel so good coming out of the woods. And now people talk about forest bathing in different countries and people are studying this like, effect good. that it has on people. Yeah. So, is that, um, oh, no, I can't tell who that is. I, uh, that's his mother. That's just too. like, I, oh, it's so hard to see. Um, so, it's just, it, okay. so, anyways, circling back. Um, no. Years ago, I did a vision class in my grandma's woods. And for four days, I went onto the woods with just a sleeping bag and a tarp. And my grandma and I had determined that she would bring me water at a specific place every day. So I'm out in the woods for four days. I come back in, I'm dirty, I'm gross, I'm stinky, right? Before, I mean, I'm just out of the edge of the woods and I get out and my grandma is there like this, just like waiting for me. And like I said, I'm not in a great state. I just give her a big hug. I take a shot of maple syrup, I take a shower and we spend the rest of the night. Um, she got a new Vitamix. So we're juicing and making some liquid meals for me after the four days. That feeling when you come out of the woods I mean, you can't imagine the things I went through in those four to four days. We've all had those things in our own lives. I'm using the woods as a metaphor, but those things you go through and you come out and someone is there waiting for you, right? I mean, my parents are here right now. And how many times they've done that for me when I've like been traveling, you come home, you're like, Whoa! like, wow, what a moment. And I'm exhausted and I'm tired and there's food or when I'm sick and they're there for you to like, you know, help you along the way, whatever that means. That is what the woods do for me. So you'll see that reflected in my words and in the paintings um, as we go around or even on the screen. Um, and I remember thinking like, wow, I'm just going there and I'm taking, and, and I feel so much better when I leave and, and the earth is doing this for me over and over and over again. Like, is this selfish of me? How am I giving back? Yes, I, you know, can recycle and I can do these things and I can do these things. Some people can give monetary, you can plant a tree, whatever it is, but what am I doing? How am I giving back? And I started just to feel funky about that. But then I asked the question, right? I said, you know, how can I give back? And what I heard is what I've heard other people say similarly. It wasn't like, oh my gosh, why aren't you giving to me? Why are you just taking? It wasn't like that at all. It was like, are you kidding me? We're just so excited you showed up. We're just so excited you're here. We're so excited you're talking to us. We're so excited you said hi and you noticed and you were like, how are you doing? We're so excited that you came home and that you shared with us, right? And you shared your life and you told me what was good and bad and you like came out to hang out with us. Like, that's a beautiful thing. And I was like, oh, it doesn't have to be hard. It gets to be that easy, okay? Like it doesn't have to be this big complicated thing and you got to play in this guy. These big, sometimes it's just in showing up. So, you know how you feel when, uh, when someone doesn't notice you. I'll use this example too. When you want to be noticed by someone or for your work or something you're doing and you don't get noticed and how that feels. And then you also know what the opposite of that feels like when you want to get noticed by a person or a situation or like, I did this. And someone notices you and you're like, yeah, like I want you to imagine Mother Earth and the woods feeling that when you go in. So these are actually out in the other room and we can, we can walk around differently, but I have them here, so I'll just share them. So when I... You know, it was really interesting preparing for this talk because I do feel these things and I do think about these things when I'm painting them, but I just having to reflect on the care for our common home and we think about them a little bit different. But for me, this is real, guys. This is real. When I don't feel good, I will lay on the ground, okay? Now, that can be two different kinds of not feel good for you. For some of us, I just think it's like, whew, I mean, I've had a lot of technology. I've been go, go, go. I've been like car to house to computer to phone to this. Like, I have, I'm not connected. And laying on the earth can just kind of take away all that imbalance and rebalance. 
sometimes I feel bad in my body. Like, my kidneys hurt, my lungs hurt, something's achy, my knees aren't feeling right. And I will go out and literally lay on the ground and feel it drain. I'm not just saying this for this talk. Sometimes it's just a little, but a little is a lot. Sometimes you can try all the things and try all like, I love all these potions I try for different things. None of them work, right? It's just like allowing yourself to release and surrender and just let it be taken away. Um, and sometimes it's, it's miraculous. Honestly, I'll be like, oh my gosh, wait, do I really feel this much better? Was this real? I was like, oh my gosh, it worked. It worked again. And then I tell someone else and like, I'm spreading the word of the love of Mama Earth, those open arms that are there for you at all times. The bottom one, when I'm walking through the woods, I will often like at some point when I'm done thinking and spewing and then celebrating, just put my arms out and I can just feel I'm going to be dramatic here and show you what I feel. <laughs> it's like, ah, you guys, she's here, she's here. And it's like all the leaves and the energy of the trees and the branches are like, I can feel it as I'm walking through. So by the time I pop out of the end of the path, I'm like, yeah, I feel great. I got fueled up. Um, and so I left a trail so you could find me. Like when I'm walking through those woods, it's, it's like they're all coming up and saying hello. And it's not just to me. They're like, wait. Is that Cynthia in the room? Wait, wait, did you guys see Derek? Mark's here, Mark, tell me how Mark's here. Like, they want to see you all. Mom and Dad, like, everyone's here. What's happening? Sandy, hello, hello, I'm so excited to know who are coming today. Like, just showing up. Um, similarly, in the same vein, um, James, James? James asked me if I was Italian. <laughs> and so this piece is called Grazie, Grazie mille. <laughs> so thank you, thank you very much is what it is. And that's again, you'll see this theme of gratitude. It, it just even ends on a note of gratitude, but all the times I've laid in the meadow, all the times the earth has taken what no longer served me or celebrated with me all the things that were going well. Um, and then in the other one, just go with the flow. If you forget, nature will show you how. Again, that same theme, you know, the moon, the phases of the moon, the flow of the water, how fish know what direction to swim, the flowers when they bloom, they don't struggle about it. They don't wonder if they're doing right. They don't compare to the other flowers. They just do it. They're just in the flow and what that feels like to be in the flow. So as it turns out, I have this thing for layers on a variety of levels. So I'm gonna show you, like sometimes it's physically, sometimes it's like in conversation, sometimes it's visually. So we can, like I said, we can walk around later, but I just wanted to use these as examples. So the middle one, it's visual, right? I like this visual stacking. So this is a little bit about my process, not about what it is per se, but just about the process. This visual stacking. Um, and sometimes it's in this area, it's just like one color of paint on top of another color of paint. And I'm actually gonna show you that here. So what I do is I paint the background color till it's dry. When it's dry, I mix another color in a perfect world, not always, but I like the contrast of a light versus a dark. If you put like an orange with a medium blue, you're not gonna get that pop. So I'm gonna do like a light green on top of this turquoise. And what I'm mixing with it is a medium. The medium helps it stay pliable longer because while I'd love to say on every swipe, it's exactly how I want it to be. It is very, very rarely, nearly, maybe once <laughs> did that happen. So you, this gives me time to paint it and then be like, oh, I didn't like how that turned out and then repaint it. And then be like, oh, I don't know, I like that color anymore. And just kind of gives me time to play around with it. And or the, a big area like that river, I really need more time to get that done. I can't get that done quickly. Something simple like, like this, like I know what I'm doing, I can do that quickly. So just takes any kind of medium that helps the, um, just it last a little longer without drying too much. So I'm not kidding you. I mean, I've been doing this for years. I still like it. I still like that moment when you carve through. And one of my most common art tools <laughs> is a pencil and literally the eraser. As you can see, this has got a lot of use. Sometimes I'll use this edge too, but mostly I use an eraser. So, I mean, you can do anything here. Okay, it's a little bit hard. I'm not even gonna try to be fancy because 
we're doing this for show here. But whatever you do, you can just do it quickly and you get that color through, okay? We could do, you know, so this is me normally. <laughs> okay, a little bit more precise than I'm doing right now, but like, oh shoot, that's not how I wanted it to go. You know, and we could, <laughs> I'm being silly here, but. You know, our love for the earth today is what we're talking about, right? So it's just it's just a fun way. And I'm going to show you on a canvas and I'm going to show you something I've done at my house too. It doesn't always have to stay on a canvas. It can be on a wall. It can be on a notebook. It can be on anything. So layers, visually, layers one on top of each other. The second one is, the title is Nobody Knows the Circle I've Seen. <laughs> and uh, I'm trying to decide if I, the story is now or for later. But sometimes it's just, sometimes it's about making a pretty picture and sometimes it's art for art's sake. And it's just that feeling of what it looks like to put another piece of like paint on top of paint. But also I think that kind of reflects in your life. Sometimes you do something and you're like, oh, that's good. But then you come back later and it just looks different. And you're like, nah, you know, I could probably like do something more. Like this painting has been painted on two or three times. Um, and then you do that something more and the one before was dry. So when you do that something more, or maybe it was wet, maybe it was like a yellow and then you put like a magenta. So it ends up being this beautiful orange. Again, with life, you're like, ooh, that went well. That match, that matchup was good. Sometimes it's like blue and you're like, oh yeah, I'm put this orange. And you're like, oh yeah, it's a funky brown. I don't know if I'm gonna do that one again. Same with life. It's but it's still experimenting and feeling what that feels like and seeing what that looks like. Um, and you know, when you when something happens in your life, it's usually a lesson. And it well, for me, I'll speak for myself, it comes around again and I'm like, what the world? How's my here again? But it people describe it as this like spiral up the mountain. So you are up here and like here's the camera, right? I'm seeing the camera again, so it's this familiar situation. But it's different. I'm from a different viewpoint. This this viewpoint's very different than above the trees, than here, than here. So you're repeating the same thing in relationships, in life, in job, and circumstances, and lessons. But it's always a little bit of a different view. This one. So sometimes it's level. Sometimes it's layer. Sometimes it's with physical paint. Sometimes I like to paint over an old painting on purpose for the history of it. I actually have a painting from college that I've painted over four times and I still have it. When I first started painting, I would use a, a palette knife and I would use really thick impasto paint on purpose so I could get those peaks and valleys. So when I put another color on top of it, some of it would stay and some of it wouldn't. I liked that texture. I'm a very tactile person. Um, yes. Technical adjustment. Oh. Oh. I apologize. This is a commercial break. It is. <laughs> How's everyone doing out there today? I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, did you get some feedback in the chat? All right, all right. Yeah, I, I'm a little, I'm a little excited. Awesome. Sorry to You're okay. Um, so I like the texture of an old painting, like again, in life. Let, okay, sometimes I want a brand new canvas. Give me the clean slate. I don't want any of the old residue. I'm starting fresh, new slate, new town, new energy, new job. That's what you want. That's what you're looking for. There's other times you're like, I'm glad I've learned all the things I've learned. I'm glad I have this base. I'm glad I've been here. I'm glad I know what to expect. So same is true for me with painting. Sometimes I'm like, blank canvas, this is great. I just, I could go anywhere. And other times I'm like, oh, blank canvas. I don't like it, I don't like it. I need like a starting block. I need like something to get me excited. And so an old painting often does that, does that for me. Um, this particular painting, Underneath is actually a Cynthia's. So back in the day before, this was before, Cynthia now paints over canvases too. Um, but before she did that, she'd be like, you want, you want this canvas? I'd be like, yeah, yeah, right. So I painted over this painting. And then the funny story about it is, is when I was at um, Forest Hills Fine Arts, I needed 20 paintings. 
this is a little bit perfectionist of me, but I needed 20 the night before it was two 30 in the morning. I had 19 and I'm like, okay, seriously, I got to count again. One, two, three, four, seven, seven, 19. You've got to be kidding me. Okay. I need one more painting. What do I got? What do I got? So I had this one that I think had like a flower on it, but it's two 30 and my paintings usually take a long time. And so I was like, all right, just channel channel your inner Picasso. Like I can't do something like this. It's going to take me too long. I can't be tight. Right. Alan, I got to be a little more free flow. So I was just like, you got this, you know, and I was just like doing it like this, which was super fun. And I finished the painting and it sold like, like the energy of it's very different. It was like, I was not proud of this one. I was like, uh, and everyone's like, I want that one. I'm like, of course you do. Of course you do. Cause I have like no attachment to it. All right, so we got those kinds of layering as well as, okay, I have this thing for rocks too. Like really in my yard, I have these everywhere. <laughs> but um, I also just love rocks. So again, this is visual stacking. In case I never mentioned it, you're my rock. We all have those people in our lives that are always there for you. Even in the frame of this piece of art, like you can't fall out, they've got you. They're the ones that like pick you up in the middle of the night when you have a flat tire, you hit a deer. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> um, so, and then this one, the same idea, fancy meeting you here. Actually, should we do this, Mark? Those are over here. Because <laughs> I don't know if I'll do that for the rest of them, but they're right here. Look at that, from on the screen to real life. So this one was like that bottom of the ninth one for me where it was, I'll say fun. They're all fun, but it's a different kind of fun because I was a little bit freer with how I was painting obviously different than that one over there. And then this one, fancy meeting you here. You know those people, you know some people you just know for you know a certain time in your life or maybe even a summer or maybe you eat, maybe even meet them once in line. And some people are in your life, all of your life at different times in different ways in different places. What the heck, you're here again? Fancy meeting you here like without shock. So fancy meeting you here, like sometimes I try to hide from it Sometimes I get all tangled up in it. Sometimes I have to go higher for a different perspective. Sometimes I get right to the gold, right to the nugget. But there's still, there's a lot of layers. And there's a lot happening in there. Um, all right, Mark. <laughs> this is not Mark's fault. I, I move around a lot. <laughs> I'll pause. <laughs> the people at home aren't surprised, I promise. So this one, I did not realize the dichotomy of these two paintings until I put them up on a slide together, both in composition as well as in meaning. In the first one, you know, the top thirds above the earth and then the rest is below and in this one you have a third of the earth and the rest is the sky and ironically they both have a similar meaning um because of them she was who she was this one is all about my heritage and ancestry and if you look at the bottom it's the the heavy rocks it's the great 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 and then like the, the cross cut of a log, you know, there's some years that are really thin and some years that are thick, good years, struggle years, prosperous years. You're going through here eek, and you've got those kind of years. Some are chaotic, some are even flow, some there's a lot of growth. And then some it's like new seeds, new birth, all of this combined, all of those experiences, all of that fertile soil produces this, whether we're talking about flowers or like the next generation. And then the flip is true for this one. Um, I imagine the opposite. So this is everyone in my life who has passed. This is, this could be called the nanas and the papas. This could be, this is all the nanas and the papas. This is the legions and legions of angels and guides that you have out there. This is all the dogs. <laughs> this is all, all the people that have importance in your life. So I almost like, in, and this is bellissimo beautiful but because of them she was who she was this one could be because of them she is who she is right because this is like in my lifetime
So I'm going to show you how it's done. So this was not planned. You guys are like, what is she going to do? I'm like doing a song and dance. This was not planned, but I went through my phone and I took any screenshots I had of like, if I would send a picture to Cynthia or my mom, like, here's where I'm at, like hour five, or this is what's happening. Like, or someone will say like, how you doing? And I'll send a screenshot. So these aren't great, but I just wanted to show you the process. I think sometime I'll actually take pictures throughout, but I, these are all accidental, but I had enough to show. Oh, I forgot I put this in there, but this is to show you that I am not clean when I paint. Yeah, Cynthia can vouch for that. What's so funny is like, I'm relatively organized in life and I'm a absolute mess when I paint. And my, I mean, I'm covered head to toe in like everything. I mean, look at my brushes. This is like what everything looks like. Cynthia is like, everything is perfectly clean when she paints. One time we did a painting together and I was like, hey, can I brow your white? And she's like, yeah. <laughs> like here you go like i'm not sure but i love you enough um so yeah it's just chaotic so i actually do have an art room but i don't like the vibe so i bring everything to my kitchen the trash cans open the drawers are open you just i only do it i got to get in the flow which is why i do it in spurts i don't just like dabble every day because it kind of takes over so i this one was like phase one to where it is now. So I'm always pre-thinking what I want it to look like in the end, because it's gotta be the opposite. The first color has to be the opposite of what I wanted to end up as. So I knew I wanted the water to be dark, which means I needed to start out light. So when I did this technique, it would be the flip. And sometimes things are exactly how I plan. And sometimes things go through like several renovations and sometimes they're nothing like you plan. Um, so the water was pretty straightforward. The grass was pretty straightforward. The sky, I thought I was going to do like a washy scrape through. Then I thought it was going to be pink. And then I literally think there was a full moon. And I was like, oh, full moon. Like I like the dark vibe for sure. And then I can put like, you'll, you'll find I like little bits of gold where I can sneak them in. I just like that, that sparkle that catches you. Um, so I ended up going the dark sky. And then this one just to show, like, I don't often plan them out, but sometimes I do um, draw it out with chalk. And when you're painting, you can just paint over it. And then it, when it's all done, I just take a wet rag if there's anything that's kind of like lingering still. But this one wasn't in this show, but it does kind of go with our theme, um, care for our common home, different kind of home, but still our home. Same here, just lay in color, building up, building up, building up. Uh, this one was called deep again, right? I can, I can talk about the art or I can talk about life, but all the layers and depth you got to go through to get to where you want to go and what it looks like above the surface and below the surface. And this one I put in just because sometimes you change your mind or you change a color for, to match the room. And only if it's your own house, can you do that? <laughs> or if it's for someone, you know, but this one was hanging in my living room. So I did change a couple of colors. Same here. And then also to show that it doesn't always have to be on a canvas. These are the stairs in my house. And it's the same technique as I did here. So just painting it, I painted the stairs the same color as the walls. And then when they dried, I painted them brown and, and, and just used a super expensive tool, a pencil eraser. So we're circling to the end here. And this is a piece that I, it was so funny because when Mark asked me to do this, you know, I wanted to give him the pieces that were up at Wealthy Street Bakery. And then I was like, ah, I just want to give him something more too. I don't want it to be everything. I want to surprise you, Mark. So I took one off the wall. I did the new one that's right out here. And then yesterday I went upstairs and I was like, oh my gosh, I forgot this one. I mean, because it's just a little guy, but it's interesting because it's called gratitude to Gaia, which is basically mother earth, right? So here we are talking about caring for our common home. And how did I forget this one? Um, but this one I did years ago, which you can tell because she's wearing leg warmers, which are actually now in style again. <laughs> yeah, but um, I went on a retreat and at one point we were doing a walking meditation and uh, we were just told to walk and with each step, give gratitude to the earth. So no talking, no nothing. And for about a half an hour, it was just like, thank you for everything. Thank you for your support. I love you, you know, blah, blah, blah. Right. So you keep going and, and how that feels after you do that for about a half an hour. But 
when I came in. So you can see like in my mind, what I would like peace and like different characters for different languages, giving that back to the earth, just giving that gratitude. It doesn't always have to be this thing, just take the time. And like with relationships, um, you know, they're give and take. And you know what it feels like when you're giving so much, giving so much leaves you exhausted. And you know what it feels like when you're taking too much, you all of a sudden feel yourself out of sorts and you're like, wait, what is my purpose again? What is my purpose in life? What am I doing? That feeling when that relationship is out of balance. And I don't know if everyone in the room is familiar with um, the love languages, the five love languages book, but I'm gonna just make this guess. I'm gonna make this pro 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 proclamation that my, my vibe is that um, mother earth probably has a good amount of quality time. Um, and she wants you to spend time with her. So if you get nothing else from this presentation, maybe some of you are like, wow, I really resonate with her. And some of you are like, she's kind of out there. Like either way is totally cool. But maybe in the next day, the week, the next month, you're taking a walk, you're in the woods, you're in your backyard, you're in the city, you're walking your dog, you have a house plant, it doesn't matter what, but you notice and you, say hi, hi, hey, how you doing? Or you notice the bark or you notice the leaf and how the light hits it differently. And if you wanna get really crazy, you can have a conversation and maybe you say, hey, mama earth, I see you. Like, I'm here, I love you. Thank you so much for everything that you've done for me, you know? And um, I mean, if I do that and you do that, if the whole world did that, game changer, I'm telling you. Um, you know, I, I often, if I, if I, not if, when I do my next series, it would be similar to this, but about the body, um, our human body. And I do think the earth and our body are very similar. We have them both forever, right? We assume they are this unlimited resource that they will keep giving and giving and giving and giving. And why would they not? That's what they've always showed us. We assume that until all of a sudden something feels funky in our bodies maybe we have a cold, maybe we have a flu, maybe our, our right shoulder hurts, or we have dis-ease somewhere. In the earth, maybe it's pollution in the water, in the air, maybe there's a war. It's a little bit of, there's just a lot going on, right? Um, but, you know, just taking a little time out to, to give back. It doesn't have to be this big thing, but just to spend that quality time. So if we all do that, if you walk out this door today, if that's the one thing you do, I think it's a win. And aside from going around and looking at art, that's what I have for you tonight. Um, but also, and I don't know, Mark, maybe it's just best if we stay in here for this part. If you have any questions. Yeah. yeah. I have a couple. What do you call the style of art that you do? Is there a name? And then a second question is the paint. Is it in acrylic? Is it in chocolate? What is it? Yeah. Um, so I would say when Can people. You repeat the question. Just yeah. So that they didn't get over it quick enough to use oh, yeah. the microphone. The question is, what is your style of art? And the second question is, what medium do you use? And the easy one is acrylic. Um, so I use acrylic for all my paintings. Once in a while, I'll do a mixed media. Once in a while, the this isn't what I use, actually. <laughs> it's just what I happen to have at home. I'll have a medium, and I'll you put that on top to make it shiny. Like in the water out here, it just gives it a little bit of depth, um, but mostly acrylic. I like acrylic because with oils I couldn't do this oils stay wet too long so acrylic on purpose so they dry so I can get that history so I can get those levels um and what style you know I've studied all of them and I like and take from all of them and I just describe my work as imaginary landscapes um so like not a particular side but like are you are you realistic are you abstract a little bit of both right um you know some are completely abstract some aren't like perfectly realistic. I can do it, but it's so tedious for me. It's like not fun. Um, so the imaginary landscapes, I can add that color and you can just add a little bit more of your own energy to it. What about, uh, when I see the stratosphere layers, yeah. I think of like a discovery channel or science, mm. you know? In fact, there's a show on TV called Archaeology Today. Yeah. And it shows the layers. So when I first saw yours, it's kind of a stylistic impressionist, you know. Yeah, I so. actually, I love that. Um, I'm sure I've changed careers many of times, but before I was an art teacher, I wanted to be a science teacher. 
So I do definitely have a love of that. I'm not surprised. Yeah. And I did take a year long herb class where we spent weekends in the woods and it was just like digging the, you know, digging in the ground and really like looking at the pieces and parts of flowers and of the veins and, you know, how things really are. Yeah. Realize you were going to be an artist, or so I so in high school, I was like a smarty pants, I'll say, and so there was no time for art, right? It was like I had to get all these college credits in, I had to take these AP classes, so like art was put on the back burner. And I remember my last semester being like, But I want to take art, I, I think I really like it, you know, like I was always that person people would go to, Will you make our signs? Will you do this thing? Will you make a card for my friend? And my mom, my parents always had art supplies. Like I didn't know that people's houses weren't filled with art supplies and paper. Like that's how I grew up. It was always like, here, play, here, try this, here, do this. And I'll say, so this is my, so Derek and I worked together at the events and conferences office at Hope College. And I remember my first day there, I was like, all right, what do we got here? Okay, cool. So I should go like and get some stuff. Like I'm like, do you have big paper? No. Do you have colored paper? No. Do we have like markers? We got scissors. Sweet. I'm going to the bookstore. I'll be right back. I was like, I can't, I can't, I can't work here. <laughs> so, you know, it's just kind of funny. So then, so, um, so yeah, high school, I kind of knew, all right. Like I finally took this class and I loved it. It was like a sampling class. So I got to do some ceramics, I got to do some paint, I got to do a little bit of everything. I went to Michigan State, undecided, thought maybe I'd be a science teacher, maybe I would be a dietitian. I was interested in health, but I didn't know. One of my roommates was going, she was in fashion design, and she eventually went to New York to work for Oshkosh Gosh. And she was like, I'm taking this uh, art class, I feel like you would like. And I'm like, all right, cool, I need like a couple extra credits. So I took this art class, and then the rest is history. Um, but I still did want to be a teacher. And I didn't know this at the time, but Michigan State had a really, really amazing program called Art Education. I just got really lucky. The professor was amazing. The program was awesome. It was small. There was like 10 people in my class. We got a gr great training on Saturdays. We taught art to kids. So we got all this real life training before we actually even started student teaching. Um, so when I found out there was an art education meeting, I was like, what? That's like the best of both worlds. So that's what I did. And then I taught art in Cadillac for about eight years. And then I came to Holland looking for a town. I chose it because it was near water and it was a college town. So I knew there's always be activity and life happening, which is exactly what happens when it's snowy in the rest of the world. Holland has heated sidewalks. So everyone is still out walking around. It's an amazing thing. <laughs> Um, but the cool thing is, so I'm no longer teaching because I, I kept up my license for many years, but um, I worked at Freedom Village for a while and anywhere I've gone, it's like I don't take a job for any art aspect, but as you know, it just finds you or, or they find you with it, right? So at Freedom Village, I would create sets for parties or I design, did all the newsletters or I'd make all the poets, whatever. And then at Hope College, design wasn't part of my job. But, you know, when you go there and you like pretty colors and you can do some things, it's like, hey, do you want to make some posters? And, you know, and now we have students that do it um, for us as well, which is awesome, because then I still get to do the student teacher thing, you know? Yeah. And then this is so random. I, I did put, I took this out of the slideshow, but I'm going to add it here quick. Um, who inspires you? Because you kind of asked that question. Wouldn't it be great if I had like 12 questions if you ask? I swear this is the only one. <laughs> <laughs> but I like took it out, but I'm going to add it. Um, so this is like a little bit cheesy that I'm like, oh, those are all the greats. But let me tell you why. Matisse, you can see the flat colors, the shapes, the bright colors. I like that. Henri Rousseau, the levels of land, the greenery um, is what attracts me there. Van Gogh, it's so cliche, I know, but Starry Night, I love the spirals. You'll see it in my skies. You'll see it in the water. Picasso, just because, I mean, he was just one of the first ones. He does, like if I do imaginary landscapes, he does like imaginary portraits, right? Where you're using funky colors, but you just, you, you know what you're looking at. And Surratt, I just put in here last minute because it's pointillism. And if you look at any of my paintings, it's a lot of this and a lot of this. And also Klimt, if you are familiar with Klimt, he uses a lot of gold. And like I said, you'll see it in my, in my paintings. And then this one, 
Um, <laughs> this is why I asked for that picture. So the story of this is when I moved to Holland, all I was really doing was circles. That's where I was at in my life, you know, literally in my life and in my artwork. And I'm walking around town and I see the squares painting and I'm like, what the heck? This must be like, I, I must know this person from another lifetime. Like, come on, we're doing the same thing, just different shapes. And over the course of a year, people were like, do you know Cynthia Hagedorn? I'm like, I don't. And then I was like, is she the squares lady? So eventually I got asked that a lot. Actually, she got asked that a lot. By the way, she's here. <laughs> so she got asked that a lot. And so eventually it was like, oh my gosh, I just feel like we should meet. I don't remember who set us up, but we went for, we met out for lunch and like the rest is history. <laughs> please let that be Teresa. I don't know her yet, but please let that be her. <laughs> and a lot of what I like, so Cynthia inspires me with art, but also a lot of what I've done, and I and this I say with love, is that she'll say, hey, let's do this thing. And I might not do that by myself, but she'll be like, hey, you want to display here with me? Or, hey, there's this opportunity here. You should apply for it. Or, hey, do this. So because of her, I've actually been in a lot of things. So I, she's always pushing me in a good way and getting me out there, which I appreciate. And then Joel Tannis, and this goes back to Cynthia too, but um, so we were in a show together Cynthia, Joel, and like, I don't know, 10, 12 people that Cynthia put together called Co-Inspiration. And what was cool about it is artists got together, they talked about their work, and then you had to create a piece from the conversation you had it with everyone that, you, that, how did they inspire you, basically. So then at the show, you had your work, but you also had a piece that you, someone inspired you to do. So I share this work by Joel Tannis because what I learned from him that day was to not use black. This is what I mean. And when, I, when you're studying art, or especially when you're first learning, it's like the obvious choice is black makes things darker and white makes things whiter. That's a great choice. I've been doing it for years. I, but he was like, I don't use black. I'm like, you don't use black. Like that seems like, what the heck? Like, how would you, I mean, I get you use other colors, but it would just totally change them all. So I started doing it and I loved it. As you can see, like his work and my work, there's just a vibrancy without the black. And I have plenty of paintings with it. And it's not like I don't use it, but I like the energy and yeah, I just like the energy and the vibrancy it creates. So sometimes just one little tip can just change how you do something. That's all we've got here today, people. Thank you, thank you. Bravo, bravo. Yeah. Oh, sure. There's 12 questions, what? Oh. And you can see if people want to talk with you, they can click with you in the gallery. Oh, I got you. Hi, John. Hi, Tom and Linda. Hi, Ann. If you want to turn on your camera here so we can see you and you want to ask a question, and of course, you won't have to, but Ian did post in the uh, chat. Thank you. All right. Well, if anybody else has questions, comments, jokes. <laughs> jokes, welcome. Jokes are always welcome. Let me grab the mic. Closing your mark, and then we can walk around. We'll here and walk around and still visit. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. Thanks for your willingness to your energy, uh, but your willingness to just put yourself out there and uh, and for helping us intersect with your work, but also the stuff of life and giving us the opportunity to reflect on how that looks in our own life and the beauty that is there that we can find if we just go visit it, right? right. So thank you. And wanna thank um, the members of our
programming team that helped think through like, hey, what are we gonna do next? So I uh, wanna give a shout out to all of them and wanna thank the folks that are joining us on Zoom as well as all of you that came here in the room. We're really glad that this kind of technology can help us foster a sense of community. And um, finally, we would extend the invitation. We have plenty of going on throughout the rest of this season prior to Easter that help people enter more deeply into the spiritual life. Uh, next week, we're very excited to have Sister Barbara Reed from the Catholic Theological Union doing a Bible study comparing the, the last days of Jesus between Luke and John. So you can find that information on our website, catholicinformationcenter.org. And again, thank you all for joining us. And I'm going to hit stop recording now. <laughs>